Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service Podcasts. In this podcast, we'll talk about platform workers and how to improve their working conditions in the EU. Want to know more? Stay with us. Occasionally renting a room in a private flat? Getting a ride from the airport to the city centre? Or ordering a pizza on Friday evening? Then you're one of the many users of services offered by digital platforms. You may be familiar with Airbnb, Uber or TaskRabbit. But did you know that there are more than 500 digital platforms active in the EU? They employ 28 million people, and this number is expected to rise to 43 million by 2025. It is certainly a profitable business, with revenues in 2020 estimated to be as high as 20 billion euros. But with demand for such services growing exponentially, especially since the pandemic, attention has been brought to the often poor working conditions of platform workers. So, what's the issue here? The main problem is that platform work is considered a non-standard form of employment, which means there are no rules on the working conditions and social rights of platform workers in standard labour law. As a result, many of them face poor working conditions and access to social protection. Did you know that over half of people working through platforms earn less than the net hourly minimum wage of the country they are working in? They also spend a lot of unpaid time doing research tasks and waiting for assignments. And risk being misclassified as self-employed despite working mostly or exclusively for one employer. In addition, the use of algorithms in platform work can raise questions of accountability and transparency. So, what is the EU doing to protect these workers? Well, platform work is so varied that it's difficult to find a one-size-fits-all solution. But in December 2021, the European Commission proposed a set of measures to improve the working conditions in platform work and to support the sustainable growth of digital labour platforms in the EU. Let's hear the European Commissioner for Jobs and Social Rights, Nicholas Schmidt. We have to make sure the development of the platform economy upholds the labour and social standards which have been established in the EU. If people are missing out on labour and social rights that they are entitled to, then there is a need for acting. In a parallel communication, the European Commission also called on EU countries, social partners and all relevant actors to come up with concrete measures to improve working conditions in platform work. Guidelines clarifying the application of EU competition law to collective agreements of solo self-employed people followed in September this year. Now what changes would the new rules bring? The new rules would apply to platforms that organise work performed by workers or self-employed people to third-party clients, such as Uber, but not online platforms that only promote offers or requests for services or display available service providers in a given area. Platforms such as Airbnb, whose sole purpose is to exploit or share assets, are also outside its scope. The new proposal would apply to all platforms performing work in the EU, irrespective of where the company is based or the service provided. So a coder working behind his computer in Belgium, performing coding activities for an Irish tech-based company, would be protected by the new rules. Because this is the main objective, to ensure that people working through digital platforms are given the legal employment status that corresponds to the work they do, based on a set of criteria to determine whether the platform is an employer. If at least two of these criteria are met, workers would be able to enjoy the labour and social rights that come with the status of employee, including right to a minimum wage, where it exists, collective bargaining, working time and health protection, paid leave, unemployment and sickness benefits, as well as pension rights. The proposed directive will also increase transparency in the use of algorithms by digital labour platforms by helping people to better understand how tasks are allocated and prices set and enable them to contest automated decisions. Platforms will also be asked to declare the work in the country where it is performed and to make key information about their activities and the people who work through them available to national authorities. All these measures will not only improve life for platform workers, 
They will also increase legal certainty for companies operating in this field, which will also reduce litigation costs. That's right. Now, how has it been received by stakeholders? While generally welcoming the proposal, the EU's advisory committees, the Economic and Social Committee and the Committee of the Regions, disagree on some of its points. For example, the criteria that will be used to classify the status of workers. National parliaments have also looked at the proposal, and the Swedish one warned it poses a direct threat to the country's labour market model. Trade unions and employers' organisations agreed with the overall challenges, but they differ on the need for EU action. Some believing that national solutions, on a case-by-case -case basis and tailored to the different socio-economic realities, would prove more effective. In the European Parliament, the file has been referred to the Employment Committee. And in the Council, European ministers are considering a compromise proposal put forward by the current Czech presidency. So we'll have to wait and see if they all rally around it. In the meantime, check out Monika Kish and Marketa Pup's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app for more information. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.